Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood. Hallelujah. I take this opportunity to say thank you to Almighty God because He has enabled us to be in this place at this particular time. I thank you also my viewer and I pray for you that may Jehovah God bless you abundantly. Today we have a message that the Lord has put in my heart so that we can share. My name is Pastor Sam Boy. I'm a pastor here in Nairobi. The church is called Cathedral of Praise Ministries International, Kangundo Road Worship Center. So, meaning we are based along Kangundo Road in Nairobi at a place called Njiru. Njiru, if you reach there, there is a an all a petrol station just behind that petrol station is where we are located is where we are serving the Lord is where we have a church so whenever you are around Jiru you can just come and pay a visit to us or if you don't have a church you can come we worship the Lord together and the Lord will bless us our special thanks to this station for giving us this opportunity to air the word of God to you. We really appreciate the management. We appreciate the leadership. We appreciate the entire crew for the work they are doing so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can reach to all corners of this country. And we thank God for that. Now, before I read the word of God, I'd like us to pray first. Wherever you are, please just close your eyes so that we can pray before we start the word of God. Our Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you and I bless you, Lord, for you are a good God. You are a God who changes not. You are a God who loves his people. I am here, Lord, as a vessel. Jehovah, I pray that you may use me to give your word to your people so that, Lord, they are going to know you more. They are going to receive your blessings. They are going to receive your abundance. Let thy grace be upon their lives, O Lord, and let you be glorified this particular moment. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Amen. Wherever you are, please can you say amen. Amen means let it be so. So, as we have prayed, let the word of God, let the prayer we have prayed be so. Now, I'm going to read from the book of first john the letters of john the first letter of john chapter one i'm going to read some few verses there uh verses five to nine and uh, the topic i'm going to talk about is how to be right with god how to be right with god and this is the word of god this morning this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Verses 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is the word of God 
this morning and may the Lord bless his word. This is a message that was given to the church. And the one was who was giving the message to the church, he was an apostle. And if you read this chapter, he starts by saying that which was from the beginning, what they received from the Lord. These are people who received the first hand information from the Lord. Because they walked with the Lord. They saw the miracles Jesus was doing. They saw the deliverance that was taking place in Jesus' meetings. They saw how the Lord was able to go against the odds of this life, including walking on water. So he did several things and miracles in the presence of his disciples. So they saw these things and they believed that this man is not an ordinary man. He is really the Messiah, the Son of God. And now John is telling us that this is the message that we have heard of him. He is telling us that there is a message that we have heard of Jesus. This is the message that has been preached for over 2,000 years. And that's why Jesus said very clearly that all things will pass away, but my words will never pass away. It means that even the entire world is going to pass away. But the words of Jesus Christ will never pass away. Since those days, over 2,000 years ago, up to now, the word of God has never passed away. Everything comes and go. People come and go. Systems come and go. Years come and go. But the word of God remains constant. Meaning that this word, as the Bible says that it's life. Whoever finds this word, finds life. And whoever has the son has got life. And not just life, but eternal life. And I don't think that in this world there is somebody who doesn't need eternal life. I need that eternal life so much. Everybody else needs eternal life so much. And by the way, God, when he created us, when he created us, God didn't have an intention of destroying humankind. That's why when he put Adam in the Garden of Eden, he gave him everything. He was very comfortable. Everything was given by God. But when sin came to the world, that is when things started to change. And that is when God himself started to have a different mind against man. And then the time came, the right time. He sent his own son to come and save the entire world. It means that God loves us so much. You cannot just take your son to go and die for people whom you don't love. It means that he loved us so much, that's why he gave his son to come and die for us. So that through his death, we are going to get eternal life. What we lost at the Garden of Eden is what Jesus came to give us back. Because we lost our life, life at, 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 at the Garden of Eden. But Jesus came back at the cross to give us back the life that we lost there. So now, whoever believes in him is going to have that eternal life. Meaning what? Meaning that right now, if you can believe in the name of Jesus Christ, you are guaranteed the life that we lost at the Garden of Eden. It's back through the blood that was shed at Calvary. The blood of Jesus, the Son of God. The innocent blood that was shed at Calvary. It was for us. Now the word of God is saying this. That this, the, the, this then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you. What I'm declaring right now is the message that has come from the Lord himself. That was of him himself. It's what I'm trying to declare unto you this moment. That the Bible is saying that what we had. Oh yes. And what we, what we received from him is the message we are now declaring unto you. 
that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. This meaning that there are two different things here. One is light. Another one is darkness. So, it means that there is the side of light that belongs to God. And darkness is not in God because darkness does not belong to God. So, what we are declaring right now is that which belongs to God. That which is on the side of God. Which is the light. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And his word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. So we are walking, we are needed to walk in the light of God. What is John saying here? John says that there are people who are walking in light of God and there are those ones who are walking in darkness that is against God. And when you walk in darkness, you don't know God. And when you walk in light, you know God and now you are a child of God. Does it mean that there are people who are not the children of God? Yes, of course. The Bible says so. There are people who are not children of God. Why? Because they don't walk in light and they don't believe in the only Son of God. In the book, the Gospel of, 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 the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 12, the Bible says that, But to them who believed in Him, He gave them the power to become the children of God. Other translations are saying that he gave them the power to become the sons of God. Meaning that before you believe in the name of Jesus Christ, does it mean that you're not a child, of, a child or a son of God? Yes, of course. The Bible says so. You are not a son of God because you don't believe in the name of Jesus Christ. And how can I believe? You can believe by turning, turning your heart, turning it towards him. The Bible says this. But if you walk in the light, and he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ's son cleanses us from all sin. What do, I, what do, I, what do, do I mean here? I mean that there is something called light and darkness, and there is something called sin. It means that when we have a fellowship one with another, why? Because the blood of the Son of God, the blood of Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess, if we say we don't have no sin, then we deceive ourselves. But the Bible says again that if we confess our sins. Do you get that? Meaning that we deceive ourselves the moment we are going to say that we are sinless. But when we are going to confess our sins. How? How? If we are going to confess our sins to Jesus Christ the Son of God. The Bible says this, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What does it mean? It means this. The Bible says very clearly that we were born in sin. And we came to a, sin, a sinful world. And we came and dwell in the midst of, of people with unclean lips. Meaning that we are sinners without knowing Christ in our lives. But by the moment we are going to confess our sins, the moment we are going to know that surely we are sinners, and now we want to change our attitude. We want to change our ways. We want to change our perceptions. And know that I am a sinner. And I need forgiveness. 
The Bible is talking about something called confession. Without confession, we cannot deceive ourselves that we are we are we are we are righteous. No, we cannot be. But the moment we are going to confess our sins, and we are going to say that, Lord, I know that as from today. I'm not a, I'm, 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 I'm a sinner. But I want you to come into my life. The Lord is faithful. He is going to come to somebody's life. And he's going to forgive our sins. That is what the Bible says. Now, if somebody might say, Because I've heard this several times. That God cannot allow man to go and suffer. Hmm. Even to go to hell. There is somewhere called hell and heaven. Just the same way there is darkness and light. Just the same way there is sin and righteousness. So somebody is arguing that God is a just God. He cannot allow man to go to hell. Then... The question is, why did hell came into being? Why was it made? The Bible is talking that, is saying that it was made for the devil and his angels. Which is very true, if you read the word of God. Especially the book of Matthew, it was made for the devil and his angels. But the Lord is also saying that when he is coming, he will separate the wheat from the chaff, goats from the sheep. So meaning there are sheep and there are goats. And he will say to evildoers that your place. It's not in heaven, but in the lake, burning with fire and sulfur. Which was prepared for the devil and his angels. So it means that there is a deception. The same deception the Bible is talking about. That we deceive ourselves. We say we, are, we don't have sin. There is a deception. That people believes that there, there is no way God can take some people to hell. Mm -mm. He can take some people to hell. Because there is a deception. Deception comes through the enemy. And the Bible says that he will deceive many. In the last days, he will deceive many. In the last days, he will come. He, they, they, they'll come and they'll even call for fire from heaven and come down and many will believe them. They will do miracles that are not godly, but many will believe them. They'll preach the gospel, but many will believe them. But the Bible says that we know them by their fruits. They'll deceive so many people who are going to nowhere. They're not going to, 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 to the Lord. They are not aligned to the Lord. They doesn't belong to the Lord. They don't know the Lord. They know the preacher. That is the danger we are having right now. They know the preacher than knowing the Lord. They depend on the preacher than depending on the Lord. They believe the preacher than believing the Lord. They confess their sins to the preacher than confessing to the Lord. That is the danger that is there. In the last days. So the Bible is saying that. He. Who has an understanding. Let him understand. But I thank the Lord. Because he's a faithful God. There is nobody else like him. Once you say the word. The word is going to work for the people. This word we are reading here. It is for us. It is not for somebody else. It is for us, those who believe in the name of the Lord, that it can happen and the Lord is doing it. If you can believe that, you can say amen. I want to tell you one thing. That for you to walk in the light of God, 
There are some other things you have to decide by yourself. Let me tell you, things that are happening, they happen by a decision people are making. Decisions that people do make are the things that moves things in the world. People can gather together and make one decision. That decision can bring a very big change in the world. People can confer together and make a conference and discuss issues and they come out with declarations. Those are the things that are going to make changes. People can come and decide today we want to go to this direction and they follow that direction. It's going to bring a very big change and even an impact in the lives of the people. But do you know that things, they start just with only one man. Not a multitude. To change situations, it starts with one man's idea. Not people coming together. It's just only one man proposing to another, proposing to another, telling it to another, taking it to another one. Then they come together, they converge, and they say, this is what we want to have, and this is what we want to do. Don't you know that when it happens that way, and it's being made public, that's how things happen. So the decision lies with only one person, you and you alone. Nobody is going to decide for you. He can just try to convince you. He can just try to talk to you. He can just try to give you direction and even to give you a clue of what is going on. But it's not going to decide for you. You are the only person who is going to decide the way you want your life to go. The way you want to live. What you want to do. It's a personal decision. Not two or three people. No. Just only one. Not so many. Just only one. Don't you know that when God wanted the world now to be saved. When God now wanted to take the world back to the right track. He decided that it's only one person who is going to die for the world. Are you not aware of that? Jesus, the Son of God, is the only person who died for our sins. Nobody else. All other people you are seeing or you've, you've, you've read about and you've heard, all of them, they died. They were buried and still today, their graves are still there. They are still, their remains are still underground. But there is only one person, Jesus, the Son of God, who defeated death. He was buried and rose up on the third day. Historians have confirmed that. Scientists have confirmed that. Now, who are you now to argue about it? It's there. Even if you want to go, the grave is still there. It's still empty up to now. It's a, histo a historic site in Israel. So it was only one man. And when God created the world, the world, he created by one man being put in the Garden of Eden. He didn't put two. One. Others came later on. It was only one. And the Bible says that this, that, that, that sin that came through one person has also been taken away through one person. The sin that came through Adam has been taken away through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So it means that if sin came through Adam, then the second Adam, who is called Jesus, came to do away with the first sin that took place. And that is where now we are because... Through that, we are being set free. Hallelujah. How many times have you heard the gospel? How many times have you heard the word of God? How many times have you heard preachers preaching the word of God? And have you sat down even for a single moment and to think about the word of God and to think about the messages you've heard and to think about the Bible, and to think about eternal life, and to think about salvation, and to think about your future. Have you ever thought about it? If you have not done, this is the right time for you to think about it. And if you have done, thank you, may God bless you.
you need to decide by yourself. Not for two other people. No, it is a personal decision. Because the Bible is very clear that in heaven there are names written. There is a book of life in heaven. Books are many. That's what the Bible says in Revelation. That books were opened. Books, not book. Books were opened. I believe all your deeds, all your actions, all your behaviors, whatever you have been doing, going through, all these things, there are books written in heaven about you. The Bible says that there are books which are opened. But another book was opened called the book of life. And whoever his name was not found in that book was cast into the lake of fire. Have you ever heard of that? We need to think about this seriously. Because those books will be opened on the last day. The last day is coming. Somebody might think that it's not coming because it has delayed. No delayance. The perfect time of God. And the prophecies have to be fulfilled fast. So that the time of God comes. God is a God of time. God is a God of order. God is a God of plan. All those things he asked them. And he knows. Jesus said that even he himself he doesn't know. The day or the hour. But the father who is in heaven knows. Let the Lord not come. Let the end not come. Before you confess your sins. That is very important. After confessing your sins. You are going to be safe. In the presence of the Lord. You are going to be safe. Wherever you are going to be. Because now you are going to be in the hands of the Lord himself. May the Lord bless you so much. May he be with you, protect you, and take care of you. Please, I want to pray with somebody. I want to pray with somebody. I want to pray with somebody. Just close your eyes, we pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. I adore you and I glorify your holy name. Lord, glorify yourself in the life of my viewer. That tonight, O oh Lord, is going to receive from you and the power of your spirit to be upon his or her life. I pray that you bring a change, bring a difference. Father, bring healing, bring hope. Lord, Manifest yourself right now. And attach them a lot. Whatever they lack, provide. Whatever they are going through, Father, I pray that you see them so that they are going through it with you together. And they'll come to bless and glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and believe. Amen. I want to pray with somebody who wants to confess his sins and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Otherwise, this life you are talking about, we can't see it at all. If you are ready to do that, <clears throat> I want you to say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner. Forgive me all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Take away my name from the book of death. Save my life. Save my soul. I'll follow you. I'll work with you. I thank you and bless you for saving my life. In your holy name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Say amen. If you pray that prayer, look for a good church where the word of God is being taught and preached. Go there, tell them, Pastor Boy, you saw him preaching on TV. He prayed a prayer of salvation for you. Now you want to join that church. Go to pastor. God bless you. My number is there on the, on the screen here. 0722 or 0731 And may God bless you so much. Amen. Shalom. Eternal Father. I offer you